Put down that juicy steak and listen up. Anyone can be vegan. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the most interesting and original facts about veganism that you might not have heard before. You don't win friends with salad. You don't win friends with salad. To be clear, we're mostly discussing veganism, which involves a diet free of animal-derived foods like meats and cheese, as opposed to vegetarianism, which typically includes some eggs and dairy products. Being vegan just makes you better than most people. Bingo. Number five. Humanity may have evolved because of its non-vegan diet. Now the Yagal would honor his name for bringing to them the blessings of the manic. While a vegan diet may be healthy, humanity owes a debt of gratitude to their carnivorous ancestors. At least two independent studies looking at fossil evidence suggest that eating cooked foods, including meat, helped our ancestors' brains grow over millions of years into the brains humans have today. Without cooking food, researchers say, it would have been impossible to get enough calories to increase our species' brain size. And without meat, we wouldn't have gotten the necessary protein, fats, and vitamin B12 for brain growth. So while it's entirely possible for people to live on vegan and even raw vegan diets today, we may not have become the species we are today if that's what all our ancestors had done. Ancestors, I honor you. I will try to live with the dignity you have taught me. Number four, up to 6% of the United States is vegan and a large majority of non-meat eaters are women. Did you learn that at Vegan Academy? It's no surprise that vegans are in the minority when it comes to their diet. There's conflicting data about just how many vegans are out there, though. According to research firm Phonolytics, 0.5% of American adults are practicing vegans, whereas the nutrition business journal Food Tribes report from early 2015 puts it as high as 6%. Perhaps most surprisingly is that up to 74% of those who don't eat meat, whether they be vegetarians or vegans, are female. While sources may disagree on figures, they all seem to indicate that, in the West, abstaining from meat is a predominantly female practice. You shouldn't have the choice. You should be forced to be vegan. You should absolutely be forced to be vegan. Number three, a vegan diet sees better results in weight loss attempts. I've lost 180 pounds. While losing weight can be a long and arduous process, research suggests that going vegan is the most prosperous route to take. A scientific review of 12 different diet trials that was published in 2015 suggests that people who practice vegan diets see much better results in weight loss programs. A 2014 study from the University of South Carolina also found that over the course of six months, vegans lose more weight than vegetarians, pescatarians, and omnivores. I do have a little bit of excess skin, though. Experts say that this is because the intake of vegetables, grains, and fruit provide essential nutrients for weight loss, such as fiber, and help to keep blood sugar at a reasonably stable level. Like the first two weeks, I dropped that 10 pounds. The 10 pounds that I had been hanging on to for years. Number two, a vegan diet may lead to an increased risk of heart disease. Tom! Jerry's having a heart attack! Oh no, I didn't know that. Jerry, are you okay? So while veganism may be good for your weight, it's not necessarily as good for your heart. A vegan diet often lacks several key nutrients, such as omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin B12, which leads to an increased risk of developing blood clots or hardened arteries, leading to strokes and heart attacks. But wait, research done in St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto shows that a low-carb vegan diet can decrease the risk of heart disease by as much as 10% over 10 years. So I guess a vegan diet can be both detrimental and helpful, depending on how and what you eat. Or maybe the takeaway is that when it comes to nutrition, science will contradict itself eventually, and what was going to make you live forever is now going to kill you, and vice versa, and I give up, give me a bacon milkshake. Well, you put nuts on top of a sundae, or sometimes on a milkshake, why not put bacon, right? Number one, the majority of people who attempt a vegan diet abandon it. On April 4th, 7.30 p.m., you partook a plate of chicken parmesan. <gasps> Chicken isn't vegan? While many people may attempt a vegan diet out of respect for animals or for their own personal health reasons, many end up abandoning the practice. According to Phonolytics, 2% of the US population are vegetarians or vegans, while 10% of the population are former vegetarians or vegans. While we don't know what proportion of those are vegans, these numbers could suggest that 83% of people who try veganism abandon it. Quitter, 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 quitter! The most common reasons for getting back on the meat train are problems like boredom with veggie food options and finding it difficult to sustain a meat-free diet. There is, however, some data that suggests that those with multiple motivations to make the switch, like for instance, health reasons and a concern for the environment and taste preference, are more likely to stick to it. I used to be a vegan, but you know, it was too much of a hassle. Oh God, I know. I mean, even being a vegetarian is a challenge. So what do you think of veganism? No, thank you. Do you have any tips to make the switch stick? You're just gonna step the f up. 
or you really don't deserve to live on this planet. For more evolutionary top 10s and fatty acid top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You once were a vegan, but now you will be gone. Vegan?